Hi there. We are at the art studio today at the Hallberg Center for the Arts, and we have a number of artists who are going to be here talking about uh, their award-winning pieces for the In Art Show this year. We currently have Emily Gray Kohler, and she had the piece Synchronicity, and it was a print work. So Emily, would you tell us a little bit about your piece? Hi, I'm Emily Gray Kohler, and this is my um, color reduction woodcut, Synchronicity. Um, I, this piece was actually inspired by a trip to Wisconsin last year when the fireflies were super, super plentiful. And there was an evening where they were just everywhere, and I just couldn't imagine it not being captured in a piece of work. So um, that's what inspired this piece. Um, and then a little bit about me. So this is a reduction woodcut. Um, and this is basically where I carve into a block of wood successively to create um, uh, every color you see here. So I started out with the yellow. I printed that on the piece of paper, then carved away what I wanted to stay yellow, and then printed over that the next color, working from light to dark. Um, a little bit about myself from my youth. Um, so I started out, I, there were a lot of artists in my family. Um, and my mom always had me like with a pen and pe paper and so on and so forth when I was a kid. Um, but there was this particular art friend of the family who was a printmaker and when I was about 12 she took me to, my, uh, to her studio and got me printing and I was sort of in love with it from that there on. And uh, so when I went to college I got a degree in printmaking and I've been making prints ever since. So uh, my studio is in northeast Minneapolis and I have a full print shop where I, I work regularly and full time. Emily, if people want to see more of your work, do you have a website or something people could check out? Or? Yes, so my work is online at my website, which is my name, emilygraykohler.com. And I also am on social media and Facebook um, and Instagram um, under Studio EGK. All right, well, thank you for coming down today and talking to us about your piece. Thank you so much. All right. We have Cindy Furstenberg here with us today. She has won an award for her textiles piece, White Pine. Cindy, would you tell us a little bit about your piece and a little bit about your history in, in creating art? Um, sure. White Pine started with a piece of black cotton fabric. And from there, I just began experimenting with replacing color, pulling color out, replacing color. Um, printing with um, actual white pine pieces and uh, it, it was uh, a journey in non-representational art for the background and then I sat with that piece of fabric for a while and uh, one day it called to me to build a tree and so one of the things I like to do is use materials in an unconventional way so I constructed this tree out of an altered fabric and um, just kind of began to explore building it and observing the actual white pines themselves uh, in the area. I'm from Pine City, so <laughs> it's pretty easy to find pine trees where I am and I love to be out in nature. And um, used uh, an unconventional approach in creating the needles with uh, thread. Um, I'm a self-taught artist. I have been making art in earnest for six years. Um, I began, uh, like many people do, with a paintbrush and a canvas. And um, there is an artist in the Minneapolis Arts District that inspired me to begin um, using texture. And from there, I never looked back. And I'm a very tactile person. <laughs> and uh, I, I I explored that for, for several years, and I was uh, awarded a grant from the East Central Regional Arts Council um, this spring, and so I have been working with a mentor. And I'm committed uh, for this year in working with natural processes and um, focusing on the use of textiles. So do you have any suggestions for new artists coming up? For new artists? Um, never say never and try everything and anything. I think that that's good. I think it's good to explore and try lots of different things and make YouTube your friend. There's so much good information 
um, people talking and sharing willingly their processes and techniques and telling you what to buy for materials. So just don't give up, keep on going, um, and you'll make a lot of mistakes, but you'll have a lot of success too. Thank you, Cindy. That was wonderful. Cindy's piece is White Pine. It is a textiles piece, and she won an Artistic Merit Award. I'm really excited to introduce Mary Welke. She won a Judge's Choice Award on her mixed media piece. Mary, tell us a little bit about creating this piece and your process and words of encouragement to other artists, young artists. Thank you so much. Um, I'd like to thank all of you at this center, the Hallberg Center for the Arts, for this award. And I have to tell you, this is the first ribbon or award I've ever won oh. on any of my artwork in my life. How so I'm thrilled. I, I was stunned when I watched the video. Um, anyhow, this piece is uh, an experimental piece, and. I'm playing with new, normally I do straight painting, and so now I'm using mixed media. And this piece has uh, photo transfers in it. And then it has uh, the burlap collage and corrugated cardboard, that's the fence. Mm. And then it has the, the three-dimensional, the actual organic material on it. And the other thing is it has two other very interesting things for me anyhow that I'm excited about. One is I met somebody who told me he could, he's, if, he said if you ever want to experiment with any artwork and you want to print on it, and I said, you mean you could print on top of something that I'm painting on in progress? And he said yes. He print took one of my images and actually printed the grasses right over everything, right over the corrugated cardboard and into here. Wow. So it's one of my, my images from that I've taken in the field. And then the other thing that you can't really tell, or maybe you can, is I used a torch to create this. Yes. And um, that's a new experiment for me as yes. well. So all these things are new for me. And I'm, it's an experimental piece, and I'm looking forward to doing a lot more experimenting. And I feel very proud of this piece. It's, uh, I, Greg, when Greg spoke about it, he mentioned the space. And it's, the space is very important. And I just wanted to point out again that this is, represents a fence line. Mm -hmm. And the idea has to do with the soil and rejuvenation and renewal of the soil, but it has to do with farmland and farming in a restorative manner, and also prairie, the significance of prairie and prairie buffer zones yes. to help rejuvenate the soil. So that, that is what some of this is about, indicates is the prairie buffer zone in the, in the use of the, uh, hopefully the restorative farming. And, and the other thing I'd like to share with everyone is that I, ha I am a recipient, first time recipient of an artist's initiative grant. Wonderful. And my grant subject is about prairie renewal and farmland nice. renewal and particularly uh, working with um, uh, controlled and prescribed burns. So hence the torching. The torching, yeah. sure. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm really excited about it. Well, I am excited to see more of your work. This is this is a great piece, Mary. Thank, thank you. Thank tell you us so a little much. bit. Tell us a little bit about encouragement. Words of encouragement to other artists. Yeah, I have a few things to say. First and foremost, you can't be afraid to fail. You have to allow yourself to fail. And most of what I'm doing right now is about failure. In, mm. in my studio, I'm doing all kinds of experiments, things that will never. No one will ever see, but it's, it's the best teacher is your failure. And don't be afraid to try different things. And I'm really having fun trying different things. So you never know what's going to come out of it. Feel, think of yourself as like a scientist, and you're exploring different things. And allow yourself to that exploration. The other thing I would say is um, making and creating art is a, can be a lonely journey. Mm. So it's good to, if you have anyone around you, people who can support you, that you can share things, talk to them about it. 
uh, that's really important too, to, to help you grow and develop as an artist. That's, that's great advice. Thank you, Mary. Yeah. Mary Welke, steward of the land, mixed media. It was a judge's choice award at the In Art Show. We're excited to have Richard Middlestack here today. He won an Artistic Merit Award for the In Art Show, the 2020 In Art Show, our fifth annual. Richard, I love the colors on this piece. I mentioned it during the night of the show. Tell us a little bit about your creative process. Well, I've been uh, uh, painting since uh, early college days, and it was in watercolors. But uh, my master's is in printmaking, so I really enjoyed the uh, piece that the gal did with the fireflies. Mm. <clears throat> but when you go into teaching, which I had been doing for 38 years, um, you're limited in a lot of different things. So I just continued to work with watercolors. And it was about uh, 10 years ago that I switched over to acrylics. I was in a landscape watercolorist. There's no landscape in this, except it could be based on the fact that <clears throat> the, the blue was supposed to look like a canyon. But this painting, as I had said in the uh, booklet, is a metamorphosis. And a lot of my paintings are this process of change. Uh, I think Mary even meant, uh, excuse me, Cindy made that reference. Uh, that um, as she likes to do, uh, well, Mary said she likes to do a lot of experimenting, and so do I. And a lot of it isn't necessarily failures, they're just unsuccessful events. And that's how we really do learn, and that's what Mary said. You, that's one of your best teachers, is just continuing to try different things. Um, my paintings have uh, gone from very representational in acrylics to the non-objective, which is what this is. And when I was finished with this, I didn't like it because it took so long to get to this point, and that uh, journey is what I continue to remember. Um, but this has been uh, well received by a lot of people, and, uh, and I'm glad that I've now come over to enjoy it as well. Uh, one of the things that I had recently discovered, let's say within the last year or so or two, uh, is fluorescent orange. And that vivid quality cannot be reproduced as a photograph. So the, for it to be accepted in the show, they would have had to overlook the fact that that bright orange was not showing up. Um, but yeah, a lot of this, uh, the textures that are created are done with uh, trowels. But I had to go back in and paint in those areas. It wasn't just a matter of just scraping away the paint. Um, but it uh, it's, uh, has a lot of texture, so if you do come to see the show, you will see that there seems to be a lot of stuff going on more than what you see. And, and as I made reference, um, 38 years of teaching art education has been uh, my background. Uh, retiring in 2008 is about the time when I started really picking up acrylic painting, so I've really enjoyed it. One, because I was so in, intrigued by the subject of watercolor painting. I was really focused on that. And as you continue to focus on creating something, oftentimes you get into make, trying to make it look right. And I discovered I don't have to make things look right. I just have to make it look good. Right. And that, that is how I've been approaching my painting recently. I, I remember an author once said that you write, and, and I'm, I'm assuming that, that writing and creating a piece like this is, is very similar, but you need to know when to put your piece out to pasture. <laughs> when to let yes. it go and say, okay, I'm confident this is done enough. <laughs> well, and, and interestingly enough, there was another painting that had a lot of oranges and stuff in it. Um, and in fact, I think it was in my uh, two-person show with um, <clears throat> Annie Young, which was last yeah, fall. Yeah. And that painting um, did not, I think there was another one, that, I might be confused by that painting, but there was a painting that I thought was done, but it just didn't feel like it. Mm -hmm. Two years later, I added blue dots into that painting, could have been that same one, and now I feel it's finished. Yeah. But, but it didn't feel finished right. for two years. I lived with it, but I said, you know, there's something not right about you. 
but uh, now with the blue. So that's when I did this one. I knew that I had to add the blue. Yeah. But that was a last thought. Up to that time, it was mostly warm colors. Uh -huh. So the blue was the very last thing that I knew had to be added. As uh, far as encouraging uh, people who coming into the art world, I, I, as I said before, <clears throat> and as uh, Cindy and Mary has mentioned, it, it's experimenting and trying different things and not worrying about not completing something that's going to be a masterpiece. Because if you get hung up on product, you're going to miss the process. And it is the process that all of us enjoy as creative people. Not so much, well, it is nice to see something that, that other people like, but it was the process that created it that um, I finally came over and said, all right, I do now enjoy it. But I was enjoying the process of creating it. Yeah. So that's very important. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you much, so much, Richard, for coming down and You're talking welcome. to us today. Thank you for the award. Yes, Richard won a Artistic Merit Award for his, is that Mysterious? Mysterious. Yes, an acrylic piece. Thank you. You're welcome. We have Tomas Alvarez today. He won, He has a digital uh, photography piece that he did, and he won Director's Choice for the In Art Show. And I have to apologize because I did pronounce his name wrong, which, you know, is going to happen. It's Tomas Alvarez. Tomas, tell us a little bit about your process, about this piece. Um, yeah. All right, so this was photographed on Leap Day this year, February 29th. <laughs> And it was at the Frozen Photographers um, annual event they get together on the North Shore. Um, we snuck out of a class and went up to Sherdove Cove along the um, along the North Shore. Uh, what I my process is typically right. So I took a photo that was very similar to this one um, about five minutes before I shot this one, but. I, it, what I what I'd struggle with is context, right? The mm -hmm. lake is so big, everything is yes. so big, and how do you isolate something but not isolate it and kind of share what you're seeing? So I really, really struggle, but it's a challenge, and it's a, it's a challenge that I love. So the process for this was trying to frame this tree to give you some perspective of the lake, to give you some idea of what the context was around it, the snow, the tree behind it, the trail you really can't see, you get a little bit of hints of ice in there, but it had been one of those days where, um, well, the year was frozen cold or yeah. frozen warm, frozen warm, so everything was really slick ice. But yeah, I'm a long exposure junkie, so this was 20 seconds with a 10 stop ND filter. Um, normally, I just kind of expose for the highlights, so I was really more worried about not blowing out the sky. I can pull yeah. up the rest, yeah. the detail of the other parts. Um, but yeah, I love kind of calming down the lake. The lake was windy. You can kind of see some mm -hmm. of it in here. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much my process. But the tree just, when we rounded this corner, my son was with me and he's somewhere like, if, he's somewhere over here. <laughs> um, but this tree just stood out and the name came from um, looking at it and seeing all the exposed roots and everything else, yet it still stands there, yet it's yes. still yeah. hanging on, right? And then it looks like there's a line of other trees just coming up to take its place. Yeah. So part of that, that all just kind of drew me into that moment. I was probably trying to figure out a good way to photograph that for a good 10, 15, 20 minutes. But it's just, it, it's about being there and just kind of seeing the things, but really trying to show what's really going on in that context. So that's a big deal. So other digital photographers, do you have words, my daughter is a photographer, and do you have you know, words of advice or suggestions as to, as to taking pictures in this digital world? In, in, yeah, the advice that I give to people all the time is make yourself happy. Shoot for yourself. Don't oh. try to shoot to impress a judge. Don't try to shoot to That's impress great your friends. Don't try to make yourself happy first. And then once you do that, share it, do something else. But eventually, it's like one of those things in business that, you know, event, your, your audience isn't there yet. So if you're sharing something that you really love and people don't understand it, well, keep doing it. Eventually, they will get it or something will catch on. But number one, make yourself happy. Don't try to make somebody else happy. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you, Tomas. Yeah. Love this piece. It just speaks Minnesota and it just oh, yeah. speaks North Shore. So thank you so much yeah. for going out there and yeah, taking that picture. You. Thank you, guys. Tomas Alvarez won Director's Choice for the In Art Show. 
We have Betsy Alwyn with us. She won an Artistic Excellence Award for the In Art Show with her Lightness of Being sculpture. I'm really excited to hear about your process, Betsy, and, and how you came about to creating this. And, and so tell us a little bit about yourself and the piece and encouragement to other artists. Okay, well, I'm a, a sculptor, and I was trained in some very traditional processes, but I also use non-traditional materials. And about 10 years ago, I started exploring slip cast objects, and I started working with lace, uh, ceramic lace, and casting that to convey a type of fragility. I was really interested in that duality of strength and and fragility. And mostly I was making slip cast objects that were infrastructural, you know, uh, I beams and pipes and hand tools as well. This is the first piece where I put a body into the work. And I always thought of the ceramic lace objects as being a metaphor for the body. And so this was the first time I put an actual body, and it was, you know, it's not easy to do that because body parts, you know, I think about artists like Louise Bourgeois and um, Robert Rauschenberg and even Jasper Johns who use cast body parts in their work. Or There's a bit of violence in that, and I didn't want this to have mm. that kind of disembodied, you know, weirdness. So it was yeah. tricky, and I think um, just the use of the rebar and it kind of cradling that it becomes more of a gesture. And I guess that's what most of the parts in this work are, they're gestures. So I often use rebar, and I like the texture of rebar. And I also started working with flocking rebar. Sometimes I paint it, but sometimes I flock it. And the flocking softens it, I mean very literally, yeah. but also visually. So if you can imagine touching it, you shouldn't touch it, but you can imagine touching it and it being kind of fuzzy and it also becomes a gesture, so the rebar is usually something you don't see. It's inside of concrete. And so bringing it out and making it part of the structure gives it kind of a drawing line and becomes a, kind of a stand-in for this idea of the built environment. And the anvil, um, I used, was making ceramic anvils as well, and I thought it would be kind of nice to have an anvil that people can see as an anvil, recognize as an anvil, but also see it as this foam, and people kind of recognize the material. So I'm interested in people recognizing every element of this and also the material that it is. There's no sort of question about that, but then wondering why all of those elements are together. And so for me, it becomes not really a a story or a narrative, but more of like a poem. So all of these um, materials are together and there's a kind of logic to them, but it's more of a logic that you have to kind of parse out for yourself. So it's very physical and it's very much about the body and tactility and also some contradictions. So soft anvils and fuzzy rebar and ceramic arms. And well, the arm, I had, like I said, I was working with cast objects, and I would just build those objects, and I'd put lace on them. And in the middle of the night, I, I guess I had this idea to cast my own arm. So I just made a cast of my arm, and then I made a lace um, arm out of that, and then I cast that again and made a mold and poured slip into that. And then I carve all the negative spaces out. So that's all hand done. Wow. Yeah, so it's really important for me that the arm or any of my ceramic objects that are laced be hollow and porous because that gives them that lightness. Mm -hmm. That gives them that, they're, they're structural because you know ceramic is extremely strong actually, even as it's fragile. So I like that duality. So I guess that's the duality that I'm, I'm working with. Right. Do you have any suggestions to other sculptors who are out there creating art during this, during this time? Mm. Uh, 
during COVID, but as well as, you know, just aspiring to be successful. It's a, it's a difficult time. I think it's a hard time to get materials maybe for a lot of people. So mm -hmm. you can work with things that you have around and just experiment and put things together. I mean, I think you can make sculpture out of anything. Yeah. That's beautiful. This is uh, Betsy Alwyn's piece, Lightness of Being. I, I looked at the arm and I looked at you and I thought, those look very similar. I'm they wondering are, if those. Yes. <laughs> I don't always cast my own body, but for this piece, it was important. And it actually, some people think it's a self portrait in a way, which is. Sure. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's, I guess that's all there. All right. Betsy Alwyn winning an Artistic Excellence Award. Thank you for her Lightness and Being sculpture. We have Dennis uh, Genero here today. He won an Artistic Merit Award for his car wash digital photography piece. So tell us a little bit about your piece, uh, your process, and suggestions for other digital photographers uh, up and coming. Well, thanks, Jess. <sighs> This piece here is kind of a culmination of a process I started about 15 years ago when I started to kind of take on abstracts in digital photography. Actually, I started out on film, but uh, this piece here, I learned a lot and it's kind of an important piece for me. Uh, one, I don't normally print on metal, but after doing my initial print on an inkjet machine, it just didn't have the depth I needed. So sometimes you have to print on metal to be able to get some of that backlight and be able to help create the image. Uh, the other thing I learned this, I started doing abstracts just taking natural light and shooting objects in nature. But the last three or four things in abstract that have been successful for me have been in really dynamic situations. So uh, this series came to me when I'm, you know, of course, getting my car cleaned, and I'm riding through this little <laughs> tunnel of light and foam, and I'm kind of going, hey, this is kind of cool. How do I pull this off? So I actually went on a very, very slow day for the car wash and said, hey, I'm going to get in the back seat because they know they want me to move the car forward if somebody's right on your behind okay. once you get through. So, and we started going through and I just started working quick. This shot resonated for me for a couple of reasons. One, I've studied a lot of oriental design and I really am enamored with red. <laughs> There's usually a touch of red somewhere in an oriental painting or a design piece. And so I like the colors. The other thing that I realized that was working in my favor, which made me turn to metal, was the negative space in the background that is so graphic. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden I was seeing a couple of different leading lines kind of competing with each other that made a good dynamic for a square format. And that's about as far as this piece goes. Uh, my only thing for digital photographers, study other photographers. Get out and when we get a chance to get back in galleries and get, see original prints. You have to understand that a photograph, the traditional meeting, is it printed on paper. Please get out and see a print because most people don't realize the reason why Ansel Adams is famous is not because of his composition, because of the mastery of his print. All right, great. Now I have one question, Dennis. Okay. The title of your piece is Car Wash e Number 11. Does that mean you had to go through the car wash 11 times in order to get the right? <laughs> no, actually I was able to in the short amount of time shoot 11 images. Oh, wow. And, and so I was able to get 11 done and actually I just named it for the last one. This was actually about number four. Okay. In that, in, in that, in that. But I did wind up going through again at a different time, uh, just to try to broaden out what I might do in a series. Sure. And so that's you know. Well, 
So dynamics work well when you're, especially abstract, you want it happening. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank goodness, that would have been expensive to go through the car wash 11 times. Well, your car needs, needs to get clean. <laughs> <laughs> it is Minnesota. Yes. <laughs> All right, Dennis Jenner, Jenner with his digital photography piece, Car Wash Number 11, win, winning an Artistic Merit Award at the In Art Show. I am very excited to have Ken Ekval here today. He did a Scon vase, entered the Scon vase into the In Art Show, and won a Judge's Choice. So, Ken, tell us a little bit about your work as an artist and and this piece i'm excited to hear what you have to say about it well this one here i've you know have made other vases and uh, well anyway i like southwestern art uh, pottery mm -hmm. so i have a friend in, in uh, the area of uh, phoenix and he winters there so i told him go downtown and see if you can find some uh, pottery and take some pictures and send them back. So he did that. And the pottery, you, you can just paint it, you know, just paint whatever. Right. So then I had to take the photograph and uh, change it into what I can do out of wood. So wow. it basic is uh, at the bottom here is, is, you know, not hard, but then this is a little more difficult. And this took about, about a, a week part-time, you know, to do that. And, well, anyway, it's got about 600 pieces in it, but it has four different kinds of wood. That's amazing. Yeah, what, what types of wood do you use, Ken? The, this is new and old walnut. The walnut, the, this is the early wood, and this is the late wood. And the, let's see here, we've got maple, and this is wenji. So it has only four different kinds of wood in it. But there's different pieces you can pick out of the pile and, and pick different colors of the walnut. So. Well, that is an amazing piece. So. Do you have suggestions for other artists who create? No. My first piece was made out of one piece of wood. <laughs> this one has about 600. And I have wow. one that has about 1,100 pieces to it. So. But just, uh, it just keep building or trying to do uh, more high quality work. So, right. So. Keep on keeping on, right? Right. So I well, like it. Yeah. And obviously we do too, and so yeah. do the judges. Yeah. Scon Vase, Ken Ekbal doing a, a wood burning, wood turning piece. Yeah. Thank you for stopping by today, Ken. So we have Dennis Zerwitz Jr. here with us today. He was the first winner of our Artistic Merit Award at the In Art Show. And uh, we're really excited to hear what he has to say about his digital photography piece. And uh, I, I was worried that I didn't say Dennis Zerwitz Jr. And he said that that's all right. His dad would have appreciated it. So Dennis, tell us a little bit about your piece. Thanks, Jess. Uh, very honored to win this award. Uh, this piece out there. Uh, came from, I think, the fascination that all of us have as children when we look into a glass marble. It kind of takes you into a different world. Uh, and I had a, a different photo a couple years back that was uh, featured a lot of Hot Wheels cars. So that, this image was born from that in a way of kind of taking the familiar and making it a little more complex, kind of getting sucked back into uh, the world that we all once knew. And um, I created a, a custom light table for this uh, shot that I was able to put a very powerful strobe below it and shoot upward through the marbles. And in my head, that was, it was going to be fabulous. But in reality, <laughs> when, I, when I made the photograph, um, in the normal color space, the way you see it, the imperfections of the marbles really did not help the picture. There was some yellowing, and it just was uh, underwhelming compared to what I had in my head. So um, I explored some of our, the digital processes that we have at our disposal. And with a, one click of an inversion button, uh, it created something close to this, and I was immediately hooked uh, because it looks like, again, it revitalizes that interest that we had as children mm -hmm. to get sucked into a different world. But with this kind of uh, processing, it really makes it look like um, almost like bubble wrapped galaxies. And uh, if you can see the image in person, if you can stop by the gallery and check it out, um, you can see all the little imperfections of each marble. 
Um, but it really does look like a, a, one of those Hubble, distant Hubble galaxy shots that you see um, from time to time. So um, another thing that I did not expect when I was creating this, but it makes geometric sense, is when you line up uh, many circles like this, it creates straight lines. So uh, when you're viewing this, check it out up close and also step back and you'll all of a sudden start to see straight lines come in when there is nothing straight in this image. So um, sometimes when you just create and have fun like that, different things will pop out of the, the pieces at you. And as far as um, speaking to other digital photographers looking to get better at their craft, uh, that's it right there. You are in a very, very accessible uh, form of art. Everyone in this room has a camera in their pocket, so you have it especially harder to come up with something different. And my big advice is not only just keep creating, that's an obvious, but surround yourself with people who are masters of their craft and find people who will give you the straight up just truth and some, some really constructive criticism about your work. There's a lot of people out there that will pat your back, but if you can find someone that says, it's I like it, and then they list 10 things that they would change about it, <laughs> those are sometimes the best people to hang around with if you truly want to be an expert in your craft. Thanks, oh, that's, that's wonderful. No, thank you, Dennis. I appreciate all your words of wisdom and Obviously, we appreciate this piece. Artistic Merit Award for the In 2020 Art Show. Thank you, Dennis.